So hello everyone, and uh, well, I'm so excited to be here on uh, GitOps days. And uh, today's talk is about GitOps at scale using Fleet. So my name is Sayyam Patak, and I'm working as Director of Technical Evangelism at Sivo. And you can find me on Twitter at the right Sayyam Patak. And I'm a CNCF traffic portainer ambassador. I'm CKAADS certified uh, Docker community leader. And uh, yes, I do a lot of meetups. Uh, I organize a lot of, yeah, used to organize a lot of in-person. Now everything is virtual. And uh, yeah, I'm in Flux Ace. I run my own YouTube channel at sayamvarak.com slash YouTube. So make sure you check out, uh, it's all about cloud native streams. And um, I wrote a book on CKS certification that you can check out. So uh, before we dive into actually uh, what Fleet is, uh, let's go into the bit of history, uh, history behind Fleet. So uh, as you all know, K3S, K3S is a Kubernetes distribution. It was gaining quite um, the you know uh, adoption uh, in the industry, uh, basically more for the edge ones where people are uh, you know using more than thousands and thousands of clusters. And so the problem quickly became like, how do we manage those clusters? So that's where the you know whole concept of fleet that we actually want to manage the clusters. Uh, so the rancher team was thinking like, how do we manage the clusters? Because uh, from the requests of their uh, user base, what was demanding that? So more than you know thousand plus clusters running, uh, then uh, obviously the need for managing the clusters at scale increases, and then came the fleet. So uh, fleet on on initial uh, grounds was just uh, you know uh, was just developed as an engine uh, for syncing the cluster states. So that the first step was uh, to sync the cluster states uh, throughout all the fleet of clusters, uh, which is more than you know thousands and thousands. And it has been actually uh, there has been blog of you know up to one million kind of it can manage that, but that's a different kind of story that I'll touch more later. And then it, uh, due to the rise of adoption of the GitOps uh, that was there and uh, more and more popular tools uh, becoming popular. So GitOps at scale, then it eventually turned down to GitOps at scale because uh, you manage them, you can now do GitOps with them and obviously at scale. So what is Fleet? Originally Fleet was just an engine to sync the cluster scale and with GitOps being, uh, you know, uh, being the bigger picture and VWorks, uh, you know, pioneering, pioneering that um, uh, GitOps field. Uh, so Fleet also turned into GitOps at scale. Now Fleet is GitOps, GitOps at scale and it is uh, de designed to manage up to a million clusters. That is the official documentation, uh, official definition from the documentation. So it, they actually wrote a blog, uh, like how they did up to that million clusters because it's more than, you know, a lot of millions of objects that Kubernetes has to manage and it cannot be done with the regular things. So you have to use kind and, uh, and other stuffs. So now uh, the first question that eventually comes to your mind, why you want to create a new, uh, something new, uh, you know, uh, with respect to GitOps at scale when Flux and Argo is already there, they are doing good in their own space uh, in GitOps field, then why do we need to create more? So uh, this particular, slide is actually from a uh, rancher's point of view, like how they were thinking, how the team initially was thinking. So uh, Flux, as we all know, it's, it's kind of a pull-based approach uh, where you, you know uh, you give a, a path uh, to monitor in the uh, repository or Git repository, and it is a kind of pull-based uh, model for that. And basically it's more of a single cluster kind of oriented. And Argo, on the other hand, is a push-based push -based approach and it's multi-cluster capable. Yes, it is multi-cluster capable, but it doesn't scale to that level uh, because when you talk about K3S at edge, uh, so it is running you know, more than thousands and thousands of clusters, so which becomes difficult to uh, do GitOps with at scale. So Fleet is similar to Argo, you can, I mean, on initial grounds, yes, it is uh, similar to Argo. It is meant for scale, and it is also meant for disconnected clusters. So that's also another plus point. So uh, you can also use Fleet for the disconnected clusters. So these are some of the uh, you know highlights for that. Now, um, before diving into the architecture and I explain all the components, I want to touch on actually the the namespaces that gets created. So obviously Fleet will be installed as Helm charts within a Kubernetes cluster and it will create certain namespaces. Now it will create a few namespaces like um, say you have cluster A and uh, you don't have a multi-cluster kind of environment. Uh, so you will be having certain namespaces which will be pre-installed uh, when you uh, install Fleet. So first will be the Fleet local, which is uh, like 
which is created with one cluster, which is the initial cluster that the, where actually the fleet is running. So it will be the fleet local with one cluster, which is local and one cluster group. So there will be one cluster group default. So these two things will already be pre-created for you where the default cluster local will already be there. Next comes the cluster namespace. Now this is created for every registered cluster. So now what happens is consider of a multi-cluster scenario. Now you have a fleet cluster running and uh, you want to register another cluster towards fleet. So that becomes a registered cluster. So uh, that namespace also gets created in the form of this format, like cluster, then the namespace, then the cluster and the random string. And all the bundle deployments uh, for that particular cluster is put there. I'll talk about bundle deployments next. Then comes the fleet system. Fleet system is actually the controller which is running and even the fleet agent which is running on the uh, registered clusters, uh, they run in the fleet system namespace. And uh, one uh, last you have the fleet clusters namespace. It is uh, basically for storing the secrets for the uh, cluster registration process and nothing else runs uh, apart from this in this particular namespace. So that's overall, you know, how the fleet, um, uh, the namespaces work. Now let's see actually how fleet works and what what exactly it is in, in a more, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, diagrammatic way. Now, uh, fleet is basically a two stage pull model and uh, fleet controller will pull from Git. So this is the fleet controller. So uh, this particular architecture kind of depicts the uh, multi-cluster environment where you have uh, many clusters to manage. Now, what happens is there can be a single cluster. You can call it a fleet manager or you can call it fleet controller. They both are, you know, uh, kind of interchangeable terms. So it uses all the power of Kubernetes APIs. And this fleet uh, cluster controller will be connected, will be doing the actual Git ops. So this will be connected to a Git repo. That's how the connection is there. And uh, and what it is, it's a bunch of Kubernetes API custom resources and uh, you can interact with kubectl. So this is the fleet controller. Next comes uh, like the fleet agents. Now fleet agents actually run on the downstream clusters. What do you mean by downstream clusters? The clusters that you are connecting to uh, the fleet controller or fleet manager. So this, this particular is a cluster group and there are multiple clusters in that group and you can have multiple cluster groups and you can have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of cluster per cluster group. So that's how you do the grouping. So you have cluster group, you have few clusters in that, and then you create, uh, then you have the bundles. Now what happens is fleet agent will run on these clusters. This fleet agents is also another Kubernetes controller. Uh, so everything is, you know, uh, in, in kind of a Kubernetes way. So it's a Kubernetes controller that watches the upstream. So it does two things. It watches the upstream, um, uh, the fleet, uh, manager and it also manages the local cluster so it manages uh, it watches the uh, watches two things so that's the kind of fleet architecture and i'll explain you more with the demo because that's where things get interesting and that's where you will be learning more so let's move to the demo so basically one is a live demo if live demo doesn't work then i have a backup demo <laughs> i have a backup demo for that so what happens is uh, I have two clusters already there. So these are actually the, uh, let me just escape it. Yeah. So these are two clusters, uh, fleet main one. So the, it is CVO Kubernetes clusters, which are K3S based. So it is using uh, K3S version uh, V1.20. And another one is uh, fleet agent one. So fleet main one will be running the controller and fleet agent, obviously, as the name depicts, it will be running the uh, agent. And so this is the gist of uh, things that I have already prepared and we'll run it uh, step by step on the uh, cluster. So what we are going to do is we are doing, a, if you see over the documentation, we'll be doing a multi-cluster install. We are not doing a very simple install with a single cluster. We are doing a multi-cluster install just like this particular diagram that I explained to you. So first is just uh, getting the certificate. So let me see if I'm in the right. Yeah, so controller, live C, C means controller. So we have the certificate generated. Yes, June 11. Yeah, it's 11 for me. And next is the API server URL. Uh, you can get it from cube, uh, kubectl config view. And then API server would be the certificate. And fleet, again, uh, it's a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, the CRDs. Uh, so first is the fleet CRDs. And the next will be
this one. So it's creating. Okay, it's done. So we'll clear this. And now uh, we give the API server URL and the API server certificate, which we have just uh, uh, created for that. And it will install fleet onto the cluster. So basically now what we have done till now is we have installed fleet controller onto a cluster. So what we have done is if you go to the documentation, so we have done fleet controller installation in multi-cluster installation, we have done a fleet controller installation. Uh, obviously the next part is the fleet manager is ready and you can now register the clusters. So now we go to the cluster registration process. Everything I have uh, already uh, you know, put that in a guest. So the registration process obviously will run uh, on the, the cluster that you have to register. So it, it will be a new cluster uh, where you have to uh, run all these uh, commands. Yeah, before that we have to create a token. So we have to create a token and this token will be used uh, so that it gets registered with the cluster. So Rancher is already kind of, you know, something they have already pioneered this space where you can register clusters, uh, a single Rancher, you can have multiple clusters that can be registered, multiple clusters that can be imported. So agent runs over there and it connects to uh, the the uh, Rancher. So similarly, it's, it's the fleet controller and the agent will be running and the token will be used to connect uh, to all these clusters. Okay, so we have this deployed. So now what we'll do is we'll create uh, just a namespace. So this is still running on the controller cluster, cool. So we have the token, token is simple file I can show you. So it's a simple token file that is there. So we'll quickly run that. So token has been created and now we will get the values from the token in the values.yaml file. This values.yaml file is important because this will be used when we register the agent. Now we have to run it on a agent cluster. Oops, I'm not able to copy it, okay. So we have to run it on the agent cluster. Where is that? Oh, before that, we also have to create a cluster group. Yes, so cat cluster group cg dot yaml. So basically cluster group is this particular thing. If we go back here, go back here. Now we are what we are doing is we are creating a cluster group. We are creating this particular boundary where we'll define what all clusters will be part of this group based on the labels. So we are saying that this we create a production group in the namespace cluster and all the clusters having a label env prod which are connected to the controller should be part of this particular cluster group. I hope that makes sense. kubectl create iphone fcg Awesome, so we have the cluster group ready. We have everything ready. So let's go to our agent. So this is our agent, uh, live agent. And now we go back here and we run this command. And while running, we set the environment label and we also uh, use the values values.yaml file that we just generated from the token. Uh, from the token, we created a values.yaml file. So it'll install fleet agent. I hope the components ran successfully for the fleet system. Yeah, everything is running. So you can see the namespace uh, fleet system. It has a good job. Uh, fleet agent is there, fleet controller. The controller is also there. That is good. Awesome, so we already have for the fleet agent also deployed on the cluster. And we can actually see if the cluster, we get the clusters. Yes, so the cluster got registered and you can see three out of three nodes is, uh, you know, uh, are ready. So it means it has registered uh, the cluster. So that cluster is also registered. Now what we do is, 
now we enable gitops so uh, now the the gitops part comes into play uh, so we enable git git repo we create a object uh, git repo and uh, in the namespace cluster so everything in fleet is namespaced scope so all the uh, things will be happening in the clusters namespace and you have to create you know uh, different namespace for different cluster groups uh, if you want then uh, you have to create your own their own git repos and uh, the targets and uh, so the repository so this is a repository uh, it is fleet demo i'll i'll show you that as well the branch is main the target is the cluster group we specify the cluster group as a target and we just created previously as you can see above uh, we created the production group cluster and the path is basically which path uh, whenever that uh, uh, the files in that particular path gets changed so it deploys that now the good part is a uh, fleet can deploy manifests helm chart and customize so anything it will automatically pick it up and deploy it uh, but internally how it is doing is if anything you specify it will convert it into helm and then deploy so even if it's a yaml file it will convert to helm and then deploy because it's easy to manage the releases are easy to manage so let's do cube cube cdl apply hyphen f repo so basically the thing that i'm showing you is a standalone one so usually you have seen you must have seen everything uh, sorry just let me see oh sorry i ran it in a wrong cluster so this has to obviously run in the um, controller cluster or the fleet manager you can call that any so the repo is created uh, now we can see get pod siphon a so it should create a pod okay it created in the cluster namespace it has created a pod which is initializing two things and once it's completed we can see cube cdl get pods so this is the agent cluster the target cluster and we can see the cluster the our um, uh, service is already getting deployed so what we'll do is watch cube cdl get pods and we can see uh, the service is getting deployed and yeah gitops is enabled you can add n number of clusters uh, to different cluster groups and it will automatically deploy uh, anything that is there so even if and the service is here so if you go here this is a service so you can see it is working and even if we change to v2 and we commit the changes so that's how the whole gitops process is so it is automatically watching the demo repository and i have changed the deploy.yaml file changed the image to v2 obviously this can be done using the github actions so you can have github actions commit the code and it will uh, create a new file in the deploy.yaml uh, and then uh, the um, it will be deployed over the uh, it will be redeployed to this particular agent cluster which it is you can see it is happening right now so i think uh, i'm about time and i'm uh, the demo is also concluded that i have done kind of shown you gitops like if i change anything it reflects here you can connect uh, n number of clusters uh, in in different cluster groups and connect uh, to fleet so that's how the fleet manager will be managing a multi cluster deployment uh, across all the clusters for helm uh, customize or uh, even the plain yaml files so yes you can use it with rancher as well so like this in the dashboard you can enable uh, gitops it is pre enabled when you install rancher for a particular cluster it already comes with a default namespace that also i have prepared just to show you the ui it is already getting done via the ui uh, you can see continuous delivery section is actually fleet uh, in the behind the scenes cool so that's pretty much it and uh, hope uh, you liked the fleet concept and where they are heading to more integrated towards uh, rancher but can be used easily as a stand alone project as well